Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you inside Alder Street Arena here in Orangeville for the opening game of the season for the Orangeville Junior B Big Master Northman taking on the Aurelia Kings. I'm Matthew Carrick alongside Molly Casey as the JBI Sports Network presents Northman Junior B Lacrosse. Familiar white jerseys there for Orangeville coming off a season where they were first in the Southeast Division but ousted in the first round of the playoffs. A team, Molly, that's always got championship aspirations looking for a quick start here tonight. Absolutely. Uh, the Northman, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the 2016 Founders game in the energy. The team, they always they bring that team aspect together, and I, I'm expecting to see the same thing tonight. Coming out party that year for Rylan Hartley. Of course, we know the career that he's yeah. gone on and uh, the goaltending factory that is the Orangeville Northman. Lucas Johnston, hoping to be the latest name thrown into that category. Northman will go right to left here in this first period. And the opening faceoff pushed in the direction of the Aurelia Kings. They're in their blue jerseys with red shoulder caps going left to right, working away from Chase Byers, who gets the start for Aurelia. Quick setup here for the Kings. Ball works over to Sam Neely. Cross crease pass there and didn't connect as it bounced out of the stick of course and Miracle. Northman quickly picked up. Looks like the chin strap might be loose here for Landon Pater. So he'll pass the ball to Evan Break and then head off for a change. Two officials, by the way, Phil Givens and Molly, you were very excited to see Delaney DuPont down there on the floor. Absolutely. There's something empowering about seeing a woman in lacrosse. May it be a player, may it be a ref. I think there needs to be a, a larger woman presence and I'm excited to see a referee on the floor. Gordy Power, the eighth overall scoring leader in Junior B last season. Couldn't quite come up with that initial rebound, but his Norseman teammates help him out after Byers made a save. Up top here for Jake Barkley, and that pass bounces away and goes back over center. Coming out of the crease is Johnston. Shot clock continues to tick down. No over and back here in Junior B unless you're killing a penalty. So we continue on with 10 on the clock, sidearm shot. Here from Evan Break, and Byers will make the save. Carson Thayer gives it to Noah Querrington, the captain of the Kings, and as he lowers his shoulder, that lets out a few hoots and haulers from the bench. Halfway now through the Kings shot clock is they've got it up top. Miles Short, excuse me, Jake Curran. Lot of ink on the side of the Aurelia Kings. As this is an early not earlier than normal, but early start to the season. A bunch of players still off at school for both of these sides. And these are the games that you need to win early in the season. 
kind of sets the standard for what the future is going to be. Ball got away from the cutter there in a collision in the corner. Jake Fitzpatrick couldn't pick up near the end of the shot clock. So the Aurelia Kings picking up here in a good atmosphere here in Alder Street Arena with music playing, NLL feel. And two and a half gone here in the first period. Ball up for grabs along the half boards. Ten on the shot clock here for Aurelia. They'll let one fly for the far side. And Bjorn Tillman got it in, but Johnson with a pad save. Now Dealman working on Keaton Walsh. He'll head off as Brake takes over at center. Down in the corner, a couple side steps from Brake cutting through. That hits off the post. Iron on the cage and then iron in the rafters giving Orangeville a fresh 30. First good scoring chance for either of these two teams. Look at the pick and roll here. Another shot. Didn't hit anything of Byers before going up out of play off the stick of Mason Kreller. The Kings will take over. Jesse Ashkwee finding Colson Miracle off the bench. Miracle's sidearm finds Johnson who steps up to meet that one. And now loose ball back to the far side. Sean Custigan all the way in and scores. Costing it on the change, a couple stutter steps, and it looked like it caught or really a flat foot, and he puts it in the end in the back of the net to make it one nothing. Sean Costigan had options there, it looked like. Really not sure where he's gonna go, takes it himself. And one nothing here inside of the first four minutes of play in this first of three 20-minute periods. Get you accustomed back to the summer rules. Orangeville player Gordy Power lost the stick. Still going to try and force the crease violation, though. Tyler Ross all over that black paint. Got rid of it before jumping in. Rush in from Riley Thayer now stops just before that crease as the defense crashed in over top. Four and a half gone in this period. One nothing Orangeville. It's a junior B McMaster Northman open their season. It was a third place finish in the Mideast Conference last year for Aurelia. They were swept in the first round by the Nepean Knights who Went all the way to Founders Cup as we get a stoppage here. And I believe our first penalty of the game coming to Evan Break. An illegal cross check. Break trailing the play. He'll come in on the left side of your screen. You're right in the numbers, Molly. Yeah, absolutely. It's a shame to see, but. Time of that penalty was 15 14. It's the first power play of the game coming here to Aurelia. Jesse Ashkwe will quarterback it. First pass off to his right hand side, skipped over the outstretched stick. Low shot there, Lucas Johnson makes the save. And now quickly ran out to the far side by Graydon Stokes. Shot clock will tick down here on the penalty kill, but again, Orangeville cannot go back over center now. Down low, ducking. Here's Power got collided with, and he's going to draw a penalty. And will be four on four coming up for a minute and 20 off the high sticking call. You know, even with all the players that are away at school, this team is, both teams are still giving it all. Well, that's the thing with the, the younger guys that are slotting in. This is 
perhaps an audition for later in the season, perhaps. Absolutely. You know, you think of a guy like Matthew Nyes playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs, knowing that there's roster spots coming back Absolutely. in. And a lot of these players definitely have the opportunity to move up into the NLL. Initial shot there off Byers. This is going to go all the way down floor, and shot clock resets as Lucas Johnson picks up. A lot of room out on the floor now. Four on four for another minute. This ball works across to Marcelo Carrio. Shot from the outside. That rings off the post again. The second time they've found the pipe early on here for Orangeville. Coming off the bench, Bjorn Dillman. We'll spread it outside. Penalty, well, 30 seconds away from expiring on the Orangeville side of things, which would then put Aurelia shorthanded. Crease violation there is, I believe that may have been Carter McLaughlin that got it a little too close. Ten seconds away from the Northmen having that power play. Ball taken down in the corner. You can see already Aurelia queuing in on Gordy Power, recognizing that he's probably the biggest threat. And Power not only drawing double teams, but now his second penalty of the game. We're going to get a holding call. Absolutely. And that'll bring an extra attacker out. Six on four set for Brandon Sanderson and his Northman now. And we have something just inside the fan, a little stare down. But what we do have is a 2-0 lead. Just too many options out there for Orangeville Molly. Absolutely. Great play done by the team there. Wasn't sure if there was gonna be a little bit of a fight there, but the ref was able to get in there before <laughs> that happened. Jack Marwick for Aurelia, nose to nose with, I didn't catch who it was for Orangeville. Pretty that much was, that entire set. Yeah, that was 28, Holt and Marshall. Keep our eye on their interactions throughout this game. I think our clock is reset here. It's seven, just over seven minutes gone here in the period. 2-0 for Orangeville is the delayed penalty call against Carson Thayer released the initial penalty from the box. And look out, this one's headed for the stands. So Carrier back with it. Power in the shooter spot on the right side. That's him now putting it back up top. Carrero. Northman definitely taking advantage of this power play. Down to break on the crease. After scoring that most recent goal, break trying the same play. Jake Barkley now. He'll stop up with a fresh shot clock. Down to power. Carrero. Hard shot from Barkley. That hits off an Aurelia player and goes wide. Shot clock continuing to tick down. No look pass to the crease. Another one far side and break. What a save from Byers. Byers well aware. The 10 count was on. Officials say that Aurelia did not cross center. Much like Tony Rose, no straight line that goes all the way across where the hockey red line would be, so. Play allowed to continue. Miles Shorey, the AP, gives it up at the tail end of the shot clock. And that takes the penalty time down to 38 seconds. No power on this set. As they go to break back on the crease and a high shot there from Mason Kreller.
Byers controlled that loose ball, was looking to see if you can see power on the bench, and that was just a shift off, it looked like, as we go back to five on five. Two nothing here, 40 seconds away from the halfway mark of the first period. Ball bounces at the feet of Shorey. Miles Shorey from long range with five on the clock. Has that one hit off the end boards and then a couple bounces in the crease behind the net of Johnston. Stick with us before the break as general manager Ed Johnson will be in conversation with Brandon Sanderson down on the floor. And the Johnny's Pizza Frisbee Toss coming up at the second period. If you're in the area and can still get to here to Alder Street, you can participate in person. Big cut and a fake from Riley Thayer down to the crease. And that shot gets through the legs of Johnston and Aurelia are on the board. Bit of a weird one here as Thayer gets it down to the crease and nearly just finding a little spot there to sneak that one through the legs it looked like of Johnson. I was, I was trying to figure out how that got that goal, but. The end result is a 2-1 score here with just under 10 minutes to play in the first period. And the quick response from the Northmen. Jake Fitzpatrick from Marcelo Cario makes it 3-1. You can definitely feel the intensity of that quick turnaround. You could tell that the Northmen as soon as they saw that goal, they were ready to bounce back. All characteristics of that familiar silver and black logo throughout Ontario lacrosse. Where you don't want to let them get on a run because Yes, it's two goals now, but it could be six before too long if Absolutely. you're not careful. Ball ended up in the Aurelia bench here, and they did quick restart it over on the far side. With now Neely putting it in the corner. Jake Curran. That angle shot there from Neely as it worked back. Handled by Johnson. Don't have the shot totals up here, but it almost feels like Aurelia is, might be leading in that category. Power being worked over in the middle of the fan here. It's where all the attention of the crowd is at. Trent Tibbet on him. Ball works up top and they score. And as everyone was watching power, the ball moved back to Cario. It's a break that starts it as it looked like he was going to go back to the crease one more time. And the outside shot from Cario makes it 4 1. That was Cario's second goal of the game. Loose ball up for grabs and <laughs> talked about both teams missing players. Power obviously eighth in the scoring, but shows the depth that a team like Orangeville has to miss guys as well. As we get a broken stick down on the play, it's in pieces out of the hands of Carson Thayer. Now it looks like it tripped over by Quarrington. 
He's going to bring it back to Cario. Cario over for Barkley. Loose ball in the crease. And right up the shot clock. That will hit the center line, and the official will restart it with Aurelia. Under eight to go. Ball outside, here's Neely. Now a screen and a roll and a nice recovery there. As the ball carrier gets swarmed now by three Northman players, Neely picks it out and scores. So both Aurelia goals now coming off the stick of Sam Neely. And they just have not been able to get far away from Orangeville here in this game. Noah Quarrington. Picking up that face off. It'll go over to Jesse Ashqui. On to the crease, the quick stick. Don't look down, but Aurelia within one. Jake Curran, the late arrival. We get a goalie water break and 4 3 here for the Northmen. This is already how intense it is in the first period. I can only imagine what the rest of the game will be like. You can tell how bad both teams want the win. Again, perhaps closer than Orangeville thought it might be. And Josh Presley will take over now. Another set with no power. Ball bouncing into Byers. Under seven to play here in period number one. Four three the score. For the Junior B Orangeville McMaster Northman. On the run, the twister. Oh, just kept out at the line. What a play from Keaton Walsh. Colton Marshall trying to capitalize on an incredible defensive effort. Back the other way. Here comes Marshall. Got bowled over and ended up falling into the end boards. But my goodness, Walsh back the other way. Bryson Murray. Big high step and a shot wearing the 16. Normally occupied by Mark Waters. The 19th Junior B scorer last year. 66 points in 16 games. Not here this evening. Evan Brake way outside. Again, no power. Torero over to the far side. Taken down in the middle was Preston Gear. Penalty coming. Off the break shot. And it'll be another high stick as Presley was taken down with five and a half to go here in the period. Looks like Carrero going over the top. Carrero will quarterback this power play. Power on his left. Presley and break off to his right. Near Creek side is Mason Keller. Carrero. Back for Presley. That shot hung on to by Byers. And all over Riley Thayer with a fresh twig. Gets stripped of that ball as he crossed over center. And Johnson will recover it. 30 seconds gone in the Aurelia penalty. Five to go here in the period. Key assistant 
Assistant General Manager Ed Johnston will be joined by Brandon Sanderson at the first intermission as that long shot from Carrero gets in on Byers. Brought out by Alex May. One of many APs here for Aurelia this evening. Jesse Asqui. Keep it to the far side. Faces a double team. Under 10 to go on the shot clock. Now it's a triple team. And Asqui lost his stick to make matters even worse. Colin Thompson there to pull the ball away, which felt like an inevitability. At that point, 30 seconds to go here in the Orangeville power play. They're up by one with four to go in the period. Josh Presley. Across to Carrero. Presley and Carrero playing catch. Now power down on the crease. Carrero, long shot. That hit off a stick. And only four seconds for power to do anything with it. He gets run hard into the boards and no time for a shot. Only eight seconds left. Look out. Scramble here towards the boards. And, man, Jack Marwick has been all over everything tonight for the Aurelia Kings. And Power is going to go to the box. Take a couple jeers from Aurelia as he goes off for roughing. Golden chance now for Aurelia to tie this thing up. Warrington wanted a quick explanation. This will be four on four for a couple seconds. A couple extra seconds than perhaps it should have been as the door never opened on the far side. Here's Ashkwee. Quarterback in this power play. Ten on the clock. Shot there. Shoulder save from Johnson. Goes into the corner for Bryson Murray. Up top for Ashkwee with a fresh 30 seconds. As Curran on the near side goes there now in the shooter spot. Taking top spot was Colson Miracle and his pass intercepted. It's Graydon Stokes that will run it over center. 2.45 to play here in period number one. Josh Presley trying to duck under a screen. May have taken an inadvertent check there as Marwick gets back to work forcing that pass to go wide. Querrington will give it off to the far side. Running into it here is Bjorn Dillman. 40 seconds left of the penalty, so they can't take the whole thing down. We'll see what they can do with 12 seconds left of the shot clock. Long outside rip off the end glass. They're a rising shot there from Currit. Now it comes back and off Johnston. Into the mesh, nearly picks it up in fresh 30 here for the Aurelia power play. They'll go up top looking for Miles Shorey. Another interception and double team comes after Landon Pater, including Marwick. Somehow Pater able to work free. Power seconds away from rejoining the fray. Last minute and 30 there, we're back to five on five. The Norsemen nursing a one-goal lead, 4-3. And a big collision over in the far corner. Everyone kind of forgot about the ball as it sat dormant there before Thayer able to come across and pick up. And Power at center. Got the bounce and trailing off the bench is Mason Kreller. Long shot from outside. Jake Barkley can't find the mark. We're down to the last minute here of the first period. Both teams will have two timeouts to use if they can take one per period. As we get into that territory, Thayer will leave it. As the Kings try and work the clock down. Under 20 on their shot clock. 
Spinning away is Ashkwe. Ashkwe looked like he wanted perhaps the dive, but maybe remembered at the last minute he can't do that with the cylinder rule here, but ended up the first skid burn of the season. No carpet here at Alder Street, but trust me, it still hurts. As we're down under 10 seconds, low shot there from the Northman. Comes right back here for Carrero, that shot. Byers makes the save and then peeks up at the clock, watches it hit zeros. And looks up to see Aurelia within one after one. The Northman leading 4-3. Ed Johnson trying to find Brandon Sanderson, but as he does that, we'll remind you of the inaugural McMaster Junior B Northman Golf Tournament coming up Saturday, May the 2nd at the Wild Winds Golf Club. $150 per golfer, a $600 for a foursome. Lunch goodie bag is included. If you get a hole-in-one, you can win a car, courtesy of McMaster GMC. Entry details will get to you. You know, a little sloppy, but not bad. Okay, yeah. good, good. Uh, second period going forward, what uh, what are you going to tell the boys? What kind of adjustments we got to make here? We just got to clean up our mistakes, um, dropping the ball, you know, running out of our end. We just got to play with a little bit more speed, um, run the ball up the floor, and, you know, uh, bury our shots. Perfect, perfect. Good luck. Well, uh, you're ahead 4-3 to three right now, so uh, good luck in the second and third. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, Salty.
Second period underway here at Alder Street Arena in Orangeville. Matthew Carrick and Molly Casey and our JVI Sports Network crew bringing you Junior B McMaster Northman action here on YouTube. Orangeville now in their white jerseys going left to right here in period number two. Still working away from Lucas Johnson and still Chase Byers in net for Aurelia facing an early save off the left pad. From the outside, that shot hooked a little bit and they're going to say it went off Aurelia, I think, out of the stake, stick rather of Jake Barkley. And 4-3 Molly after that first period, I think Aurelia's got to be pretty excited to get out of there within one goal. Absolutely. Coming off such a hot, intense first period, you can tell the pressure is on for both teams. Like I said earlier on, they both want that win so bad, and it's showing today. Another save from Byers, who wasn't even on our game sheet coming in. It was supposed to be Quentin Greenfield. Although Byers being backed up by Jackson Cook here this evening. From the outside across, Bjorn Dillman hits the post and that's three off the cage down in this end here in the game. Orangeville hit it twice in the first period. Neely shot hits off a body. Back in for Miracle halfway through the shot clock as it continues to tick down. Cutter through the middle was Miles Shorey that skipped off his stick and still up for grabs. No one gets it, the twist shot, and then running through the crease here was, excuse me, Jake Curran. Marwick climbing the ladder to knock that ball down. Otherwise, Orangeville had one off the bench. Here's Power. Gordy Power sending one wide. And for Mason Kreller. Sidearm shot through traffic and guess what? We've got another post. <laughs> Jake Barkley now with the ball. I was wondering if he was going to take top spot there, but likes to send it in the corner and then go crash in. Mason Kreller digs it out. All bouncing down the far side. First one there was Vincent Onorfrio. And an Orfrio. No look, trying to send it across through to Evan Brake, who had a three point first period. Speaking of three points, Marcelo Carrero, a pair of goals on hat trick watch here. Big fake from the far side from Kreller. Shot bounces off the end boards and. Chases on for Aurelia, running into it in stride. Noah Quarrington, and the captain gets pushed out wide by Preston Gear. The defensive effort getting a cheer from his bench. I do have to say, both defense on both teams are very, very adamant about getting that ball away from the opposing team. Long shot. Not sure that Johnson initially saw the entire thing. It bounced just outside of his crease, which would leave it up for grabs. Can't reach in here in Junior B. This ball, oh man. What do you do there? Carrero gets the hat trick. That brings up the score here now to 5-3 Northman. Checking out the replay here. <laughs> Looks like that ball almost had a bit of a bounce as it went in. I don't know if uh, Chase Byers there was prepared for that. Looked almost like Riley Thayer may have deflected it just a little bit, but you don't ask how, they ask how many. And for Carrero, that's number three. And it's a two goal lead for Orangeville. Josh Presley 
Sends it to power. Return pass, Jake Barkley. Thought he had a lane. Will now back out and come back towards the top, looking for a screen. Turns and fires and right into the back of Thayer. Then goes back looking after the loose ball. Shot there from Carrero. Not happy with three tonight, but this ball skips up and out of play. Aurelia is now in possession of the ball. Number 15, Jake Curran, who has one goal tonight. Curran, another addition to this lineup tonight. Here's Colson Miracle. Backing down into the corner, stepping into a shot. A lot of sidearms in this game. That one from Bjorn Dahlman. Ended up going wide and ball skipping away. Northman will capitalize in a change and a couple fakes from break. May have faked himself out as now. Oh, behind the play. Holton Marshall. Did he get into Marwick? Carter McLaughlin was calling for a trainer right away. By the way, he's number four there. Jack Marwick is holding his neck. It looks like that might have been a stick to the neck. Officials are going to talk about this. Five minutes for high sticking. That's going to number 11. I think Devin Doig is going over to serve. What was Holton Marshall's penalty? We'll have to wait for the official word here, but Marwick has been stirring things up all game and did so behind the play. And then again, I believe it was Marshall. We'll wait for the word. Turned and gave him a two-hander upstairs. And that'll probably be an early night, but what an opportunity right here for the five-minute power play of which they can score two goals for Aurelia. They'll get a reset with Johnston making the first save. And now set up, putting Ashkwee up top. I believe the third power play of the game, Molly. Yet to score, but they do as I say that. And are back within one. Sam Neely completing the hat trick. Three of the four Aurelia Kings goals coming off the stick of Sam Neely. Shot off the post. That was a great save there by Lucas Johnston. They're wearing out that net on our left side tonight. As Orangeville tries to push again. That shot, Byers saves. Rebound to go in the corner. Keaton Walsh, who saved one of his own last period. Ball that was trickling towards the line. And Walsh right there to put his stick on it. Here comes Power, taking the scenic route. Going to go all the way around the crease. Going with him is Tyler Ross. Ross still on Power. And finally, out of the stick of Gordy Power. Shot clock's going to expire here on the Kings. Or excuse me, on the Northmen. And as that happened, the Kings back to the power play for three minutes. Have one of two goals off the major here. And I believe it's a high sticking call against Marshall. They announced Doig in arena. I always find for some reason those five minute penalties 
always seem like a lifetime. They always seem to go on for so long. How about AP Miles Shorey from the outside tying this one up at five. And they take the ball out of play. The first junior goal, we believe, for Miles Shorey is the one that ties this game at five. Second one off the major, so Aurelia go two for two. And are back tied here, 5-5. Five, five. Seven and a half minutes gone in the period. And the Kings push it again. Kings looking for their first lead of the game. Jesse Ashkwee down to the crease, turns back. Tried to stuff one in, but Johnson had all angles covered. And you can feel... I think Delaney DuPont realized her mistake here and gives the ball to Aurelia. Can feel Molly that Aurelia thinks the game is shifting their way here. Absolutely. Want to continue attacking down in the corner of that ball. Skipping away from Jake Curran with a goal already. Curran and Shorey, the only two players not named Sam Neely to score for the Aurelia Kings here tonight. Ball picked up by Sean Costigan. He goes all the way to the crease. Sends one off the face mask of Byers. Nine minutes gone here in the second period. Again, scheduled for three 20 minutes. We'd be remiss if we didn't thank our sponsors. You saw them scroll across your screen during the intermission. Player down in the corner for Aurelia. And getting up slowly is Bjorn Dillman. Bit of a hitch in the step. Looks like the left leg, perhaps. So we'll keep one eye on Dillman and one eye on the ball. Which is in the stick of Orangeville down to our right. Jake Barkley passes to the corner. Picked up here by Josh Presley. Continuing to cycle all on the left side. Now Barkley goes in and late in the shot clock had already drawn the holding call. And now Orangeville back to the power play. For their third time this evening, it'll be a hold against Carson Thayer. We're just coming up to the last 10 minutes of the second period. Chance for Orangeville to go back on top. Have not trailed in this game. They go back to break and that crease play, but Byers has been all over it since they scored twice in the first period. Ross putting on the brakes. Jim Meredith screaming at his team to get on the correct side of center. If that ball went back because they're shorthanded, it would have been over and back. Northman trying to slow things down here. Brake has it. High off the crease this time. They sent it to... Pardon me, Carrero. I was expecting that to be Power. Power's right there with the ball. Now in the shooter spot, and he got filled in after the shot that Byers saved. Rebound does squirt out of the crease. In the stick of Carter McLaughlin, and he gets chased out to the corner. McLaughlin and Kreller, a couple parting shots for each other as that ball was sent down the floor, and there's 40 seconds left now. In the Northman power play. 
Josh Presley. Playing catch here with break. Presley gives it to Carrero. Carrero, oh, look at the quick stick save from Byers that time. Barkley got absolutely robbed. It's a great save there from Byers. No question. Again, he's caught on to what they want to do down on the crease. Absolutely. You notice the way he's moving his shoulders. He's noticing the sides that they tend to go for. Pro move from a junior B goaltender. Giving something to the shooter and then taking it away last second. Here's power. Shot, he goes to that shoulder and that time Byer's just gonna stand his ground and again, power on the floor after taking that shot. Ball down, picked up here, Fitzpatrick has a goal already, gives to Power, and Gordy Power first of what's probably gonna be many this season. Checking the replay here, it looks like Jack Fitzpatrick passes it over. And that goal is scored by number 15, Gordy Power. That's his second goal of this game, bringing the score up to 6-5 for McMaster Northman. I knew I was missing one. That's the one I was missing for Gordy Power. <laughs> second of the game, had 41 last season in 19 games, 79 points for Power. I wouldn't be surprised if that kind of goals and that kind of method is what gets him called up to the NLL. A lot of junior B and A Northmen go up to the NLL. Oh, look out. Oh, I thought I was getting one. Faceoff doesn't quite come far enough to our broadcast booth. Lands in the Aurelia bench. We almost need our own stick. Get them to sign it after. <laughs> Oh, outside shot and Jake Barkley, who was just robbed on that crease play earlier, shoots it over the defender and it does not miss this time. Another one that I think may deflect here, Molly. Jake Barkley passed it over to number 16, Josh Presley. That's bringing the scores up to 7-5 seven, with seven minutes, 27 seconds left in your second period here at Alder Street Arena in Orangeville. Well, it kind of, it's what we talked about earlier, right? With Aurelia breaking in and you know that Orangeville is gonna get their run, especially in their home barn. Absolutely. Aurelia had theirs and now it's trying to stop this at perhaps two goals. You can feel the tension and pressure, though, coming off Aurelia. Not sure what the call was, but I know Brandon Sanderson didn't like it. Too many men against Aurelia. They'll go back to the penalty box. That's being served by number 19, Carson Thayer. Two minute penalty at 7.05 left in the second period. I always thought when it comes to head coaches, they always have eyes like hawks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Northman's got a minute 44 to take advantage. And they scored their eighth they, goal of the game. They're only going to need 17 seconds of it because Gordy Powers got the hat trick and the Northmen are rolling here at home. You can just see the power in Gordy when he... Uh, Gordy Power, see what Nicely I did done. there? Nicely done. That was not intentional. <laughs> but you can just see the power in him when he goes for that goal. You're not supposed to admit when it wasn't intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I 
8-5 now. After Aurelia scored back-to-back -back goals to tie it at five, the closest they got all night long. Junior B Northman threatening to run away with this with six and a half to go back in the second period. Kings, though, may still have something to say about it. On the run, taking off Tyler Ross, the shot. And the save from Johnston. We've got that as the first power play goal for Orangeville tonight. I have to check that, but they did score one with a six on four extra attacker set. As power may not be done. We got two separate tie ups here, including Ethan Marwick, who gets an extra shove, and then Power looking to go after Trent Tibbet. Only one to get a penalty out of this, though, is Mason Kreller, who's headed off for a slash. Delaney Dupont saying slash came after the whistle. Which is why Keller is in the box. Great save once again there by number 29, Lucas Johnston. I've got Aurelia for two power play goals, make it three, as Neely now has a pair of them for four on the game. Couple plays that break down here, Molly, from the top shot. Yeah, it's great teamwork and great passes there, but what it comes down to is Neely in the corner over the shoulder there up against Johnston. Ashkwe and Miracle connecting on that one. And is there another run in the Aurelia Kings climbing the ladder to try and bring that face off down? Big hit there, send the drama in flying. That's Alex May, the AP, getting a welcome to Junior B competition. Two, now three on nobody here for the Northmen. And Byers, last man back, puts the toe cap on it. It goes into the corner, Nick Devins. That loose ball was picked up quite quick there by Devins. And everyone took off. We're down to the last four minutes and 38 seconds here of your second period. Current score is 8-6 Northman. Great save once again by Lucas Johnston. That time on Miracle. Ball picked up here by Gage Jantz. Jantz with a pair of assists already in the game. Here's to Bryson Murray. Play back down for Jance again. Ducks, no room to drive. Plays back for Murray. Murray spinning and gets hauled down in the crease. Miracle and he's lost his helmet. I think the Northmen are wondering why the play wasn't restarted quicker. They had the ball and were kind of off to the races. They had two sort of stop starts. Sanderson still fired up. Down on the crease. And shot by Fitzpatrick, saved by Byers. Had to deal with the stick and everything. Recovered quite quickly there. Carrero took a hack, and we have two penalties coming here to Aurelia. So a five on three coming up here for Orangeville. Last three and a half minutes here in the second period. They could really do with that power play. Carter McLaughlin going off for a slash. I think Trent Tibbet may have a hold and Brandon Sanderson is going to use his second period timeout here to set up a play. 
gives us another chance to remind you of the inaugural McMaster Junior B Northman Golf Tournament. Saturday, May the 20th at the Wild Winds Golf Club. 150 per golfer, a 600 for a foursome. You can transfer your entry fee to president at northmanlacrosse.ca. Lunch and goodie bag provided. Prizes for the longest drive and closest to the pin, including a draw for a 55-inch television. And if you get a hole-in-one, Molly, you can win any car courtesy of Big Master GMC. Do you know what? All of a sudden, I'm a great golfer. I'm yeah. able to score hole-in-ones like nobody's business. I'm Go not, but I'm willing to try. Absolutely. <laughs> what I wouldn't do for a new car. McMaster is one of our the largest sponsors of the Northmen, and the fact that they're willing to do something so great like that for such an up-and-coming you know, group of men and team, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Longtime supporter of a lot of sports here in Orangeville. And we thank them for their support of the Junior B Northman, as well as these broadcasts, as well as all our sponsors. And out of the timeout, the quick stick play to Jake Barkley on the crease. And this time, no heroics from Byers. Eleven seconds here, Molly, all it took. Northman definitely taking advantage of their three on five there to score that goal bringing the score up to nine to six with three and a half minutes left. Well, I think Sanderson perhaps thinking that this a point in the a key point in the game, if they can score two here, I mean, that puts them up by five. It's a pretty large hill for Aurelia to climb and calling that timeout, setting up the play. They get the first one. Absolutely. 30 seconds into the power play. About three minutes left to go here in the second period. Lead is up to three for the Northmen. Again, it was tied 5-5 just moments ago. Late in the shot clock. They need one. They'll get it from break and a save from Byers. Sanderson wants them to slow things down. Mason Kreller will oblige. Break through Presley. Carrero over for power. Excuse me, power tying things up in the middle. Here's Kreller. That pass doesn't get through. It's just knocked down. Excuse me, by Thayer. That's Riley Thayer. Down on the crease. And Mason Kreller will get the power play marker. They go two for two. Catching the replay here, you can tell Aurelia is putting the pressure on the Norsemen. But that didn't stop them from scoring their 10th goal. Giving them that four point lead. As, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just gonna say the floor spreads out a little bit too and extra space for Aurelia to cover, opening up that crease. But moments ago we said there was only a one power play goal. They've now stretched that to four here in the game and the lead is up to four for Orangeville. As you said earlier on, Aurelia took advantage of their home barn advantage in the last games that they played. And you can definitely tell the Northmen are feeling the crowd, they're feeling the boys, they're really enjoying that home game advantage as they take advantage of it here. Great save there by number 31, Chase Byers. Northman coming off two preseason victories, one in Durham, one in Fergus. 14-7 over Owen Sound. And another one, 10-5. As they get set for this season, looking to keep rolling here as they're up by four with a minute 20 to go in the third, second, excuse me. Olsen Miracle on the run, another sidearm. Rip there off the end boards. Miles Shorey. First junior goal earlier in this period, but not to be that time as we close in on the final minute. Aurelia will have both of their timeouts remaining. They can use one here in this period. Orangeville does not have one left in this 
second. Big collision there after a stumble from Vincent Onofrio. Then Aurelia a touchdown in the crease, so. I believe Trent Tibbet might have gone back in to give the ball back here to Orangeville. Josh we're, Presley. We're down to the last 45 seconds here, the second period. Rather than go two for one, it looks like Brandon Sanderson wants them to hang on until the last second here. Pick from break opens up Presley. He'll pass to the far side, walking in. Bit of a floater shot that went off the dasher, and we'll see what Aurelia does here. Not calling timeout. They're going to see what Noah Quarrington can do. Shoots it into Johnson. Again, no timeout for Orangeville here down the stretch with 15 to play. Tie up there right at center. Colin Thompson will check the clock. Presley now with eight seconds to go. Playing back here for Barkley. Long shot, two goals in a period for Barkley. Looking to get it back, and they'll just swarm the ball here and walk away with a 10-6 lead after two periods. You're watching Orangeville Junior B. McMaster Northman Lacrosse, Junior B Lacrosse here, presented by JVI Sports Network. We'll take a timeout and be back for the third period.
Back here at Alder Street Arena in Orangeville. 10-6 after two periods for the Junior B McMaster Northman. The rematch happens on May the 7th in Aurelia, a 7 p.m. start time before the next home game here. On May the 9th, the first of five in seven days, or six and nine, coming up to start the season for the Northmen. I'm Matthew Carrick alongside Molly Casey and our JBI Sports Network crew as we present Junior B McMaster Northman lacrosse here on YouTube, and it is the Aurelia Kings. Working left to right here in this third period, getting the opening face off, but early pressure from the Northman briefly poked it away. Bjorn Delman saw him limp off earlier in that second period back out there. Good to see him returning to action. And Sam Neely missed that pass down in the corner. Five on the shot clock as he re-gets it back. And a couple fakes. And Johnson went with all of them to make the save. But extended pressure now for the Kings who got the rebound back. Neely with four of the six goals tonight on the Aurelia side of things. Officially, we had... Carrero and Power with hat tricks, but officially they've got two goals each along with Jake Barkley. After two intense, electrifying periods, it's going to be really exciting to see what happens here in the third period. I think the pressure's definitely on for Aurelia. I think Orangeville wanted another holding call. There is Carrero ducked underneath. Logan Marshall down floor. Wants to go for a run. Looking for a pass as he came across center. And the first minute and a half of the period goes by without incident. And an important start to the period, Molly, for both sides because the next goal for Orangeville could extend that gap as a too many men call against Aurelia, who still have six guys out there, by the way. <laughs> But if they score, it's you know back within three, and perhaps they can get the game back on their side. Absolutely. Even though they're going off and they have the the disadvantage here of this power play for Northman, like you said, all it takes is one more goal, and that gap is getting bigger and bigger. So back to the power play that's got four goals on the night for the Northman, including. Two on a major power play in that second period. Power working down in the corner. Sends it up top for Barkley. Power shoots over the defender and scores. So we had him with an early hat trick. He's got it for sure now. Absolutely, and that brings the score up to 11-6 for your McMaster Northman. As you said there, Matt, it's looking like that gap is getting bigger. I'm sure the pressure's on quite a bit for Aurelia. It'll definitely be interesting to see what they can do with the next 18 minutes of this third period. Well, again, these two teams meet again in about a week and a half, coming up on the seventh in Aurelia. So if it's not something that you think can close the gap, what kind of statement or message do you want to make before that rematch? And as you said before, it'll be interesting to see if that at-home advantage means anything. Because it's very clear that both, both teams have exceptional, talented players. Whether or not the home barn, as you said, means anything, it'll be interesting to see what happens on that May 7th game. I want to shout out everyone watching in Aurelia. We were told that there are a bunch of folks back there set for this game. And I'm sure they would welcome you inside Aurelia's barn when the rematch happens on May the 7th. Five goals separating these two teams now. Northman lead 11-6 with three minutes gone here in the final period. From the outside, Barkley eluded his man, was looking. Great save there once yeah, again. Yeah, we've got an injury here, though, and does not look good. He's holding his leg there. Yeah. It's never a good sign. You hope it's just a cramp the way that Maruk went down. 
Catching the replay up, here. On the right side of the screen. Hmm. It's hard to say. From from my aspect here, it looked like his knee went down pretty hard. Yeah. But you can tell with his athletic therapist there, he's he's hurting whatever whatever that therapist is doing to try and get things back in the way they should be. He's hurting. Yeah, and he's hurting. We're going to take a quick time out before we come back here to Alder Street. Jake Marwick up and walking off to the bench. And looked like he was going to turn to take a spot in the bench. And the trainer, su off. trainer suggested perhaps down the tunnel might be a better path to take. Marwick. That's the assistant captain there. Hard to see. Yeah. Again, Marwick hobbled to the bench earlier in that first period as well. So hopefully nothing too related. I believe that's brother Ethan Mark just came off the floor, pointed to him, asked if he was good. And we can't see what the response was. But we'll wait and see if there's any development down on the bench. That shot from Neely hung on to by Lucas Johnson. Northman's once again here in possession of the ball. Number 16, Josh Presley. Barkley to Carrero. All the attention that was put on power early opened up Carrero. Have a really big game. We had him. We had him for five points coming in. A couple less than that officially. And Carrero is over the top of Trent Tibbet, whose bucket comes off for the second time in this game. And that's going to. Uh, Put Carrero in the box. It's giving Aurelia here that power play advantage. Getting a huge spot in this game. Long shot, goes off the end boards. This one's gonna bounce back over at center. Jesse Ashkwe. Brings it back in, quick stick for Neely. And I think just missed the mark before that bounced up and out as they give the ball back to the Northman, but. Impressive game from Sam Neely this evening. Again, with their top scorer from last year, Mark Waters out. Cam Neely stepping up with four of the six goals for the Kings here tonight. Here's Power, Orangeville's leader last season. Through the middle of the floor and a late reaction there from, I was gonna say Byers, but I think we've got Jackson Cook. No, oh, that is still Byers, my mistake. Really is in possession now, taking advantage of that power play. Only 10 in their shot clock, though. Fake shot from Ashkwe. Now from the outside. Miles Shorey got dumped after taking the shot, but the recovery by the Kings makes it 11-7. They kind of danced with that shot clock. It went down, and as soon as it reset, they were able to hit that goal. Can't see who that is. I think it's Bryson Murray. On the crease. They're definitely getting closer to, uh, as you said, that gap. Northman's four ahead now for 11 to seven. 
We're down to 14 minutes in your third period of tonight's game. I want to shout out our platinum sponsors for making this game possible. You see them on screen, McMaster Buick GMC, All Pro Roofing, and Ontario Packaging Centers Incorporated. As well as all the rest of our sponsors, you saw flash across your screen through the intermission. Jack Fitzpatrick. Quick stick didn't work, and then Carrero got dumped in the crease. Spin move coming here. Carson Thayer going the wrong way, however, so he'll stop up and give it to Bjorn Delman. Gilman finds Murray off the bench. Murray to the far side, five on the shot clock as nearly lets one fly. Johnson there to make the save, rebound right in the stick of landed Pater, and Pater taking off. Collision between the benches there. On the change, and the Orangeville bench gets their warning with Brandon Sanderson looking for an interference call. Seven minutes gone here in the period. Conversation continues between Brandon Sanderson and referee Phil Givens as play continues here under five on the shot clock. Mason Kreller lets one fly, second chance also off the end boards, and Prater goes back to say hello to Ethan Marwick. Has a pair of twos to battle. And everything's starting to intensify here. Yeah, you can feel it. I'm seeing a couple more shoves and a couple more what look like death stares in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes away from the halfway mark of the period. Ashqui. Outside. How was Curran taking that shot in on Johnson? And Costigan, wow, took a stick check that bounced off the bucket. No call coming here. So he'll slow down and give for Presley. Now head off. Costigan behind the back, looking down in the corner. Costigan without his stick. Did enough perhaps to just kick that out of the way of Carson Thayer, who may have been home free. I have to say, I always find it so incredible how whenever these guys lose a stick, they still continue to play. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the trick is to not take a penalty without the stick. Absolutely. There's another Kings player. Goes down the tunnel. It looked like Noah Querrington, who now comes back. And for the third time tonight, Aurelia Kings have too many on the floor. Already, this time their officials say they had seven guys out on the floor. Seems like to be a little wanted. bit of a, a question there of whether or not it happened, but. Sam Neely's going to serve. They were trying to call Jack Marwick back to go over and looked like he had no gloves and no bucket trying to get all his stuff back on, which may be an indication of his status for the rest of this game. Two on one back down. Ball is way out of the stick. Number 15 there, Gordy Powers limping off. It's tied for top scorer of the night. It's never good when your top scorer is limping off the floor. Shrugs off the train of those, stays back in line. But he won't be out for this power play. Minute 18 left in it with Carrero on the near side. Kreller. Cutting through on the far side was Barkley, and they couldn't get it across for him to get a hat trick. Horn sounds inadvertently. Thought we may have a clock issue, but play continues. As down on the crease, oh boy. <laughs> Evan Brake looking for Barkley and just kind of floats through no man's land and into the back of the net. 
Northman have once again made that gap a little bigger as they bring the score up to 12-7. It's Barkley's third goal. Got some words between the coaches here, perhaps. <clears throat> it's actually been going on. I was watching that earlier on in the period. I think Brandon Sanderson said something to Mark Montgomery, and now Jim Meredith, Meredith has stepped in between them. That May 7th game is looking more and more enticing by the minute. Absolutely. As Power back out there, tried to float it across to Jack Fitzpatrick, who already has the goal in this game. Now quick transition the other way, off the bench, Coulson Miracle. Gets around a screen, long shot. They did indeed give that goal to Jake Barkley. I thought it was break the entire way. I didn't think Barkley touched it, but either way, seven special teams goals for the Northmen tonight. Out of their 12 on the board, that's been the story. Here's break. Cross for Carrero. Carrero trying to find a shooting lane, finally gets it. And Byers picks that ball out of his crease. Great save there between the legs by Byers. Kings. Taking over, staring down a five goal deficit with nine minutes left to play. This one's gonna bounce away and back out towards that center line. Again, no even strength over and back. From long range, they score. I think that's Miracle working around a pick of Jesse Ashqui. Quick replay here, as you can see, Aurelia brings the score back up to 12-8. As Matt said there, the goal was scored by Colson, Miracle number 18. So four goal deficit now with nine to play. Again, we were tied 5-5 in that second period. We'll see if the Kings have another run in them. Here's Neely who's done a lot of the damage. Half of the goals so far from Aurelia coming off the stick at number seven. Up top for Curran, he's got one of them. He shot in on Johnson and the ball up for grabs as it's rainbowed all the way down the floor. Noah Querrington out the front door, he'll pick up. Jack Marwick, by the way, back on the bench. Trying to jump that left leg out. Saw him go off with which did look like a cramp, and again, hopefully that's all it is. This ball gets turned over here, and his Kings are going back on defense. It's looking like number 15, Gordy Powers, back on the floor as well. He'll take the corner spot on the near crease. Now switch to come to shooter spot. All the action over from the righties, however. Cutter there with Jake Barkley, and Evan Brake all tied up. Down towards the crease, Aurelia slams the brakes on. Here's Miracle. Miracle to the near side. That's Miles Shorey. AP with his first junior goal earlier in this game. Ball bouncing past center. Power tied up down the floor and then everyone will go their separate ways as the shot clock expires. Clock continued to run there. We lost about four seconds, but. With just seven minutes left in the third period, you can feel the intensity coming from both teams as they both are so desperate to take that win. Mason Kreller will leave the ball there for break. Reaching in for it was Corello. He took a big shot. Kreller digs it out. No shot, and then oh, off the post from Barkley. 
Again, that cage is getting a workout. Some shoving down there in the corner on this loose ball. And it's a good indication that Jack Marwick is back out there on the floor. Marwick and Brake in with each other. Marwick got taken down at the hands of Brake. And Brake with another shove. Marwick comes off with a big grin on his face. It's looking like both players are getting penalties as they'll be a four on four for the last six and a half of this third period. Break and Carter McLaughlin. So my mistake, I thought the only penalty was going there to Everett Break and the Northman, but officials elect to take both. Trying to keep a lid on things here. Again, as you said, with the last 6.30 to go. Gage Chance in the corner. Oh, massive pick from Chance. <laughs> After throwing that ball away. And now, player who ate it was Nick Devins, who immediately got up and headed down floor looking for a fast break, but Officials wouldn't blow it in for him. Power. Gets the pick from Carrero. Over to the far side, dropping the shoulder. Presley comes in. That ball bounces wide, but right back into the stick of power. His second shot, also off the end glass, and no time on the shot clock here for Orangeville, but <coughs> Aurelia will pick it up, even though the bench wanted them to slow things down. Ball kept on the outside here by Aurelia. Now the low shot from Miracle. Miracle mostly snake bit here tonight, and he'll get another shot, and this one goes just high and wide. Number of chances for Colson Miracle in this game, but just the one goal to show for it. As we've got a minute left in this four on four situation, five and a half to go in regulation. Ball comes back to Kreller. Kreller playing here, Fitzpatrick, his shot wide, and then Byers recover nicely to slide through the crease, looking for that quick stick that never materializes. Barkley pulls it down and brings it back up top. Fitzpatrick on the run, Barkley off Byers and in. Quick replay here for you. So you can see Fitzpatrick passes it over to number five, Barkley. It's brought the score up now 13 to eight. As Matt said, we're down to the last five minutes here at the first home game of your McMaster Buick GMC Junior B Northman here at Alder Street Arena. Huge scrum for this faceoff before it's finally picked up by Colin Thompson. Carrero walks it back in as penalized players are back on, including Evan Brake. Looked like he was headed back to the corner, but goes straight through the middle. Here's Power working the two-man game with Carrero, and then Carrero gets dumped by Tyler Ross, and they'll give the ball right back here to the Northman. Power shot through traffic. Looks like that may have caught a piece of Ross on the way through, but Riley Thayer there after the save was made by Byers. Does some housekeeping in the crease. Four minutes left in a five goal advantage here for Northman. Neely. Looking to send it across for Miracle. Miracle missed it briefly, and now his shot comes in on Johnston, who makes the save. 
three and a half to play. With Barkley crossing center. Josh Presley. And now Barkley playing catch with it down in the corner. Ball scoots away. First one there is Ethan Marwick. Comes to pick it down. Take it down. Excuse me. He's got a tap dance away from the crease. And all of that was on Orangeville shot clock. And look out here, lowering the shoulder as he crossed center was Max Shire. Big fake pass, and now a shot from Bryson Murray. Owen got in on Johnson, and three Northmen break out. Three on one, the no look to Thompson. Sails Aaron down into the corner. Keaton Walsh gets there to pick up, and Walsh will slow things down for Carrero. Carrero to Thompson. Walsh all the way up top for Barkley. Big tie up in front as the goal is scored. Still trying to see what happened with Nick Devins there, but Carrero completes the hat trick. Not the usual cast of offensive characters on this shift for the Northmen, but from long range, Barkley there to sail it through. And pretty much ice this one with a six goal lead, 14-8 with 2.15 to go. A reminder that the next Junior B McMaster Northman home game is May the 9th. Brampton Excelsiors will be here for a 7 p.m. start. That starts a stretch of six games in nine days running through May the 18th for the Northmen. So a ton of Junior B lacrosse as Orangeville will get one more back at the two minute warning. Gage Jantz comes in off the change and puts it in the corner. Do we have another first time goal? I think we do with Alex May, the AP. Letting one fly, so a pair of APs tonight. Miles Shorey and now Alex May getting their first Junior A goals. Junior B, excuse me. Although it looks like it's going to be in a losing effort. Down by five with under two minutes to play. 14-9. Junior B Northman, these two teams will go head to head again on May the 7th. In Aurelia. JBI Sports Network, happy to bring you all Junior B McMaster Northman home games right here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. So you don't miss any of the action from here at Alder Street this season. Minute 10 and away from the final. We'll pick and roll up top. Turned aside by Alex May. Kreller will get it back late in the shot clock and Northman looked to be content to just ice this one out as we're inside the final minute of play. Molly Casey and Ed Johnston will wrap things up for you at the end of the game, so be sure to hang on for them. Once again, we thank our platinum sponsors, McMaster Buick GMC, All Pro Roofing, and Ontario Packaging Centers Incorporated for their support of these webcasts. 30 seconds left to go late in the Aurelia shot clock. They get one through on Johnston. Rebound up for grabs, bounces away from Jantz. Jantz and Devin Doig sliding down there in the corner. Doig will run out with it and the Northmen can cap their opening victory of the season. It'll be 14-9 against the Aurelia Kings. Off to another good start. As once again, it'll be Orangeville, Aurelia, May the 7th at 7 p.m. And then May the 9th, Brampton at Aurelia. Our producer this evening was Gary Morrison, our director, Rachel Wolf. On behalf of them, 
Molly Casey and the rest of our JVI Sports Network crew. We thank you for watching Orangeville Junior B McMaster Northman Lacrosse here on YouTube. I'm Matthew Carrick. We'll talk to you next time.